Now let's talk about titration. It is a technique used to determine the concentration of an unknown chemical through quantitative addition of one reactant to another. In this course, we do acid-base titrations. And there are other titrations that are possible too. Now uh, let's start with some definitions. The definition of the equivalence point is uh, the point in a titration in which, well, it's sort of self-fulfilling here, the point at which equivalent moles of acid and base have been added to the solution. The point at which equivalent amounts of acid and base, in this case, have been added to the solution. Okay, and uh, for us, uh, equivalent amounts, another way of saying that is stoichiometric amounts. And another way of saying that is equivalent amounts or stoichiometric amounts, uh, the point at which both reactants are limiting. You've run out of both of the reactants. So that's a good, uh, another way of putting it. And that's the solution. Uh, the point at which both reactants are limiting. And both acid and base are the limiting reactants. And uh, the end point, on the other hand, is a physical, uh, a change in the physical properties of the solution. Where physical properties could be color, um, conductivity uh, are two common examples. And for, it's gonna be a color for us. A change in the physical properties of the solution that closely matches the equivalence point. And there's actually an art and a science, of course, to picking uh, an end point that is, uh, that does closely match the equivalence point. And for acid-base titrations done in this course, the best pH uh, indicator or the best indicator of the equivalence point when acid and base have been added together in equal amounts is going to be phenolphthalein. So in an acid-base titration that we're doing today, the pH at the equivalence point will be seven, uh, or, or the calculations we're doing today. So that means that you're at a neutral solution that means that, um, and what happens is for phenolphthalein, which is pictured right here in a structure that will make sense later this semester, uh, if it doesn't already. So in acid solution, phenolphthalein is colorless. In basic solution, or in base solution, that's right, in acidic solution and in basic solution, Phenolphthalein is pink. And so uh, the pH indicator as, a, as an end point, the physical property change is the color of the solution. And when it goes from acidic to basic, that's when you, have, you are going through a neutral solution and a neutral solution has equivalent or stoichiometric amounts of acid and base. Um, let's see, there's a little bit more behind this, but we'll save it for later. And that's all you have to know for this course. Pictures of a titration, well, 
Uh, here we have a color uh, with, and this will be an acid base titration. with phenolphthalein indicator. Phenolphthalein has the famous PHTH construction, phenolphthalein, silent PH there, uh, indicator. And I know this leaves a little bit to be desired in black and white, but we'll go with it anyway. Uh, so this is colorless. which means the solution is acidic. So I've got my red here for my pink. There's a little swirl of pink here. But when you swirl the solution, when you continue to swirl the solution, uh, so let's say swirl of pink, uh, but it goes away when mixed. Because, and so you're putting sodium hydroxide into this solution, so of course it's going to turn pink uh, transiently in the middle. But in the end, your solution in a titration is always, when it's properly mixed, will either be completely colorless or completely pink. And any swirl color that is a combination of colorless and pink is, again, a transitory ephemeral state. Uh, so you just keep mixing it. And that's what we will do in the lab. And when we do our pH titration, uh, that it will be important to mix it. So pink solution, basic. Now the whole point of the titration is to get as perfectly as possible the transition from colorless to pink. And so you'll find yourself adding the smallest amount possible, swirling, seeing that's colorless, at a, at a single drop, swirl, colorless. At a single drop, swirl, 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 it becomes pink. And you have done a very good job of determining your equivalence point because you only added one drop and it went from an acidic to a basic solution. And that's as good as we can get using the techniques we use in general chemistry. All right, thanks for bearing with me in my grayscale images of colored objects. The titration, uh, so here's a typical problem that uh, is called the titration problem. It says the titration of 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid solution of unknown concentration requires 12.54 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide solution to reach the end point. And the end point is going to be our estimate of the equivalence point. And more often than not, we do use the abbreviation EP for the equivalence point. It's not technically the end point, um, but since they both are EPs and since they're trying to equal each other, it'll be the same thing. Uh, but equivalence point is my abbreviation, or sorry, E dot P dot is for equivalence point for me. Okay, now in order to do this, it will of course help to have a balanced reaction. It's one that we're familiar with, but it can never hurt, and it almost, and most often, uh, helps. Uh, to write the reaction, we see, similar to previous examples in this uh, lecture outline notes, that they're all one uh, coefficients. Um, and uh, sort of the equivalence point means that moles of acid equals moles of base. So we know we have enough information to find our moles of sodium hydroxide. We have the volume of our hydrochloric acid, and we can find 
our eventually our concentration of our hydrochloric acid. Uh, next, the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll find our moles of sodium hydroxide, convert milliliters into liters. 0.01254 liters. Use molarity as a unit conversion factor. to convert liters of solution into moles of sodium hydroxide. And with the point 0.1, we're going to add another zero over here. Just made it. All right, now there's a couple different ways to do this. And uh, I'm gonna use this moles of acid equals moles of base at the EP to say, at the EP, we now know that there are 0 0.001254 moles of HCl. And if I know my moles of HCl, and in fact, I'm gonna save this space for my other technique for solving this problem, and write this up here, and make sure I'm on screen. I know my moles of HCl, I know well, let's go into green here. I know my moles of HCl. I know my volume of HCl. I can find my concentration. And this is my unknown concentration, by the way. So 0 0.001254 divided by 10 milliliters in liters to turn it into a molarity. And now I move my decimal point two places. For that, I'll even get out my calculator. Divided by 0 0.1, 0 0.1254 molarity. And that's my molarity of my unknown hydrochloric acid. Now, I said there's a second way to solve it, and typically it is more general, and we will use this second way only in my, the example that's on the next page. So, and this deals with the fact that at the equivalence point, you've added stoichiometric amounts. At the EP. And another way of saying that is, like we said in this, uh, previously in this uh, lecture portion, both of them are limiting reactants. So we can actually use stoichiometry, which just means we can use the picket fence. We know that the moles are related by each other. I'm going to set up the whole thing here. So start with my liters of sodium hydroxide. I know my molarity. And here, I know that I have one mole of sodium hydroxide for one mole of hydrochloric acid. That's because they're both one coefficients in the balanced reaction. And uh, yeah, I mean, I basically just did this step. Um, and then I don't know, well, I guess the way I would do it is I would stop there and then still do the next step. But this mole-to-mole -mole ratio thing, I think, is, is the best way to do it. And we'll see why in the next example. I still get 0 0.001254 moles of HCl, and I can still plug it in up here and get the same answer. What's different about these methods is that I do use specifically the mole-to-mole -mole, uh, ratio using the coefficients. Anyway, let's see how that works on the next one. Because the next one does not have one-to-one -one stoichiometry, and that's why we're covering this. Um, I'll write out the reaction between sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. 
if you, so this is a double replacement reaction. We can look at this as sodium and sulfate. And H2O. And it isn't balanced yet. I can see I have two sodiums, so I'm going to need a two in front of my sodium hydroxide. And with two hydroxides and two H pluses, I'm making two moles of water in this reaction. Okay, so now we're looking for the concentration of sodium hydroxide. It requires 27.5 milliliters to titrate 50 milliliters of 0 0.015 molar sulfuric acid. We have enough information to get our moles of sulfuric acid, 1015 moles sulfuric acid per liters of solution. And again, since we're at the equivalence point, we can say that we have stoichiometric amounts. That means we will use the mole to mole ratio here to find out how many moles of sodium hydroxide reacted. For every one mole of uh, sulfuric acid, I think I said that correctly, two to one, uh, it takes two moles of sodium hydroxide, 0 0.05 times 0 0.1015 times two. These two factors actually cancel out, you know, almost mathematically. And I have now solved for my moles of sodium hydroxide. And my next step is to take my moles, divide them by my liters to get my concentration. And my concentration, 0 0.369 molar sodium hydroxide. All right, let's see, we got everything on camera there. Okay, so time for a note or two. So in titration problems, you'll note that the volume in the denominator is just the volume of the unknown. Uh, solution in denominator. And uh, some students find this tricky, so I wanna state it ex uh, explicitly for um, pH, uh, calculations and uh, the uh, volume of both solutions or the total volume is in the denominator. And again, this is a critical thinking point. You're going to want to think about, um, okay, we're trying to determine for this problem the concentration of the uh, sodium hydroxide before it's added to this sulfuric acid, right? We wanna know if we have sodium hydroxide and we have sulfuric acid, what was the concentration of the so, uh, sodium hydroxide before adding? That's my pretend invisible beaker. And for the pH calculations, we're asking the question, what is the pH after the two are mixed together?